Hello dear learners, welcome for this video of redox titration part 2. In this video, I will discuss redox number and redox indicators. Redox number is generally given by oxidation number. So what is oxidation number? It is defined as the total number of electrons that an atom either gains or loses in order to form a chemical bond with another atom. So oxidation number is a total number of electron that either we can say gain or losses. So oxidation number is written in a Roman numerical numbers with plus or minus sign as a prefix. So here there are many rules to give oxidation number so we will discuss it one by one. So first of all we will see the rule one. So what is the first rule for oxidation number? How we can balance the reaction? How we can give oxidation number? So the oxidation number of an element in its free state is zero. For example, aluminum, zinc. This is also true for elements found in nature as a diatomic elements. For example, Hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine or iodine. And for sulfur, it's found as a S8. Means what? For this type of diatomic molecule as well as for sulfur, the oxidation number is 0. Now, rule 2. So, rule number 2 is that the oxidation number of a monoatomic molecule means we can say when there is a one atom like Na plus S2 minus on is the same as the charge on the ion for example if there is a Na plus means plus one is the oxidation number here same as the S2 minus means minus two is the oxidation number so this is how we can write oxidation number like plus 1 as well as minus there is a minus 2. Okay, so this is how we can write the oxidation number. Now rule 3, the sum of all oxidation number in a polyatomic molecule. We can say when there are many atom is equal to the charge on the atom. So this rule often allows a chemist to calculate the oxidation number of an atom that may have multiple oxidation state. In the other atom, in the ion have known oxidation numbers. Okay. Now what is the rule 4? So rule number 4 it says that the oxidation number of an alkali metal means we can say the family it's a 1a family of periodic table in a compound is always plus 1 and the oxidation number of alkaline earth metal we can say the family 2a in a compound is plus 2 so when there is a 1a the oxidation number is plus 1 when there is a 2a the oxidation number is plus 2 now rule number 5, so rule 5 says that the oxidation number of oxygen in a compound is usually minus 2, right? If however the oxygen, see in a compound is a minus 2, oxygen is in a class of compound called a peroxides, for example hydrogen peroxide, we can say the H2O2. Right? So here the oxygen, oxygen has an oxidation number minus 1. If the oxygen is bonded to fluorine, the number is plus 1. Okay? So here the oxidation number is minus 1. And if it is bonded to fluorine, then the number is plus 1. This is by rule. Now rule number 6. The oxidation state of hydrogen in a compound is usually plus 1. 
the oxidation state of hydrogen in a compound is usually plus 1. H plus is there. So, if the hydrogen is a part of binary metal hydride, for example, the compound of hydrogen and some metal, we can say H2SO4. Okay, then the oxidation state of hydrogen is minus 1. So, at that time, here we can find the oxidation state is minus 1. Now, rule number 7, the oxidation number of fluorine is always minus 1. Okay, like chlorine, bromine, iodine usually have an oxidation number minus 1. We can say halogen have a oxidation number is minus 1. We can uh, write uh, F minus, Cl minus, Br minus, I minus, right? So, obviously it is a minus 1 unless they are in combination with oxygen or fluorine. If it is in a combination, then it will change. Now, rule number 8, the sum of all oxidation numbers in a neutral compound is 0. For example, H2O is a neutral compound. Okay, so when we are doing sum of this oxidation number, it is a 0. Means what? H2 means 2 atom is there. So, H plus, so it's a plus 1. The oxidation number is a plus 1 plus O, right? So, O have always a minus 2. So, it's a 0. Clear? This plus 2 minus 2 is a 0. Now, for example, Zn. Okay, if we are taking example of Zn. So, when zinc is there, okay, alone, means as a metal, we can say, Zinc metal has an oxidation number is 0 by rule 1, right? And when it is in the form of cation, like Zn plus 2, it have oxidation number plus 2. It's a rule number 2. So, in general, you can say that a substance is oxidized when there is an increase in oxidation number, right? Here, there is oxidation of zinc, right? It loses the electron. So, it's a Zn plus 2. So, obviously, when it slows the electron, it will increase the oxidation number as we have seen in the first video, right? Now, Cu plus 2 plus 2 electron minus. So, it's a Cu. Means here there is a reduction. The gaining of electron is there. So, here reduction works the same way. Consider this reaction, right? Now, we will see. You can see plus 2 will convert to 0. Right, so there is a lower in the oxidation state. So when there is a copper, it's in a cation form, it's a plus 2. But when there is a metal, it's a 0. Now we will see the redox indicator. So what are redox indicator and what are the type of redox indicator? So redox indicator is a substance that can be reversibly oxidized or reduced, having different distinct color in the individual oxidizing and reduce forms. For example, we will see what are the type of electrodes. We will see what are the type of oxidation production indicators with example. We can say redox indicators. So, first type is of a self indicator. Means what? It is a substance is said to be self indicator if it itself act as a indicator in a titration. For example, when we are titrating potassium permanganate, okay, an oxalic acid. So, during this titration, the KMnO4 means a potassium permanganate itself act as an indicator. So, it is known as self-indicator. We are not adding here another indicator okay from outside so it is known as self indicator now the second example we can say the second type of redox indicator is internal indicator what is internal indicator means the indicator which is used within the solution is called internal indicator this indicators take part in the reaction for example n phenyl anthralinic acid and starch is act as a internal indicator. It's this indicator used within the fusion. We can say it will take a part in a reaction. Now the external indicator 
means what the indicators which are not added to the solution are called external means that this indicator do not take part in the reaction for example potassium ferrocyanide can act as a external indicator during when we are titrating ammonium or we can say ferrous sulfate with a potassium dichromate okay near the equivalent point drops of solution are removed and brought into contact with a dilute freshly prepared potassium ferricyanide solution on a spot plate and the end point is reached when first drop fails to give blue color so this r almost replaced with internal indicator as there is a loss of reaction mixture okay so this type of indicator is known as external indicator now the next is a potentiometric methods means this is a physical chemical method it may be applied not only to those cases where suitable indicators are not available means what we are going to we are going for some instrumental methods like a potentiometer means it's known as potentiometric methods when there is no such indicators available for such compounds but also to those cases in which the visual indicator methods fails or we can say when there is a limited accuracy in a visual methods we can go for instrumentic method and is known as potentiometric methods for example for colored solution or for very dilute solution we can go for this kind of methods thank you dear learners for watching the video in the next video i will discuss the different type of redox titrations